Stormy Daniels' new lawyer says his client should be free to give her account of her relationship with President Donald Trump. A new lawsuit filed yesterday in Los Angeles claims a non-disclosure agreement signed by Daniels, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford, is legally null and void. Stormy Daniels' attorney, Michael Avenatti, joined CBS this morning to explain just why his client should be free to discuss the alleged affair. I think at this point she wants to tell her story because there's so much misinformation out there mm -hmm. and so much misinformation that's been spread by Mr. Cohen and others, quite honestly, over the last six weeks mm -hmm. relating to what happened, the circumstances of the agreement, the circumstances of the payment, and she wants to set the record straight. She wants to be heard, uh, and she wants to tell the public the true facts of what happened here. No, this isn't a publicity stunt. I wouldn't be wasting my time or staking my reputation on it if it was a publicity stunt. We believe the NDA will be tossed out. We believe that it will show that Mr. Trump never signed either document, and therefore she's free to tell her story. So with more on Stormy Daniels' defense, we want to bring in CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman. So we're hearing from her lawyer. He says this is not a publicity stunt. He doesn't believe that the uh, NDA is a valid, right? So when this goes to court, what factors will the judge be looking at? Well, first of all, the judge has to consider whether he or she is going to entertain this lawsuit at all. It's a declare this null and void or at least tell her if she's able to speak because there is a reason that it was already broken. So when the judge is looking at factors, what Stormy Daniels' lawyer is saying is this. Look, there were spaces for signatures on these documents. You have both the NDA, which has been called the Hush Agreement, and then you also have a two-page side letter. Um, and both of these documents were to be signed. Stormy Daniels, as Stephanie Clifford, her real name, signs. She is, by the way, referred to as Peggy Peterson. So all of the identities have originally been masked. Then you have Michael Cohen signing in place of Donald Trump, or was he signing on behalf of the corporation that was set up in order to be able to pay her the $130,000. So what her lawyer is saying is, look, he only signed on behalf of the corporation. He can't sign in place of Donald Trump. This agreement is, be is supposed to be between Donald Trump and Stephanie Clifford, mm -hmm. not between Stephanie Clifford and a lawyer. That's so, his argument. So let's play a little bit of what her lawyer says, the explanation for why he thinks he has a case here. Let's play that. No, in fact, first of all, his attorney did not sign on his behalf. His attorney signed on behalf of the entity that was created in order to funnel the payment uh, to Miss Daniels, uh, first of all. And second of all, Mr. Trump was obligated to sign the agreements in order for them to be legally binding. So we should point out that the president, uh, according to this document, um, used a pseudonym, right. David Dennison, uh, and there's already a Twitter account up with but that name. Figures. But, figures. Well, <laughs> but, but then on top of that, he didn't sign under his own name or under the pseudonym at all. And the, and the right. lawyer's rationale is that so that he could say that he had nothing to do with this. He could, but we do have this side agreement, which is my favorite part. Um, <laughs> the side agreement, we can see, uh, I don't know if it will come to me. Can I do that? Yes. Yeah. We can see all those redactions. Mm -hmm. Those redactions are really where the name of uh, Peggy Peterson and redacted is referred to by a pseudonym David Dennison. So we would have to assume that Donald Trump's name is underneath all these black marks. Because to actually quote the lawyer's interview this morning on CBS This Morning, it would, I think he said, strain credulity. That may have been his words. It would be ridiculous to believe that the other person is not Donald Trump. I mean, Michael Cohen, the lawyer for Donald Trump, who really created this whole mess that has allowed Ms. Daniels to sue, um, that Michael Cohen says, I did this. I signed it. Mm -hmm. I'm the person who paid the money out of my own pocket, not out of Donald Trump's pocket, not out of the campaign fund, but out of my own. Mm. Because I'm that good of a lawyer. Or I'm that good of a friend. Or that good of a friend, yeah, actually not as a lawyer. In fact, I think we have her attorney talking about that component of the story as well. Let's listen to what he has to say. You would have to conclude that Mr. Cohen was operating on his own. Mr. Trump knew nothing about it. And in fact, the drafted agreement had a place for Mr. Trump to sign multiple places. The idea that somehow Mr. Trump never knew anything about it, I just think strains credibility.
So is that component of the story going to factor in? Do you think, well, is that something that the, the, the judge will also be considering, this I, I, I questionable mean, story? I, I, the, idea, the idea that the judge has to consider that part of yeah. the story, probably not. Mm -hmm. But the reality is this. Either Michael Cohen was acting as Donald Trump's lawyer, and if he were, he has a duty under the rules of ethics for New York, he's a New York lawyer, that he has to disclose to his client everything he is doing for his client. You can't go forward and create an agreement on behalf of a client, sign the agreement as a lawyer, pay money, and never tell your client. So if anything, Michael Cohen may be talking himself into a problem with the New York Bar Association. Wow. So how likely is it that this NDA gets thrown out by the judge and that Stormy Daniels, Stephanie Clifford, will be able to come forward and uh, talk about what, sh what happened uh, with uh, the now president of the United States? And just game it out for us, Ricky. Could we actually see the president of the United States uh, talking about this in front of a judge? Um, I don't know that the president ever has to talk about it in front of a judge, but this is the possibility. The judge could simply do the easy thing. It's called a declaratory judgment action that's very discretionary on the part of a court, whether or not, as the lawyers would say, he will enter or she will entertain the lawsuit. He could just say, I'm not going to take jurisdiction of this case, and I'm not going to deal with it. If she wants to go forward, if she believes that the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement, is not valid, she'll go forward at her peril. By the way, let's talk about the peril yes. for a second. Not only the $130,000, but in this lengthy, quote-unquote, hush agreement, which is really the, um, the agreement uh, to not disclose, there is a liquidated damage provision for each breach, should she breach, of $1 million. So this is not a $130,000 penalty. So let's say the judge entertains it. So the judge entertains it and could decide to void the entire agreement, uh, not only because there's no signature, he could simply void the entire agreement because Michael Cohen waived it by getting out there and speaking about it publicly. He's a signatory on the agreement. Um, or he could do, which is also part of the non-disclosure, he could say, look, I can't decide this. This is a case that belongs in arbitration. There is a provision in this non-disclosure that said any disputes about this agreement go to mandatory arbitration. Why, of course, why do people want arbitration? It's confidential. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of ways for a judge to get out of this, and there's a lot of ways for a judge to get in it. So you know what the most important factor is here? Tell us. Who's the judge? Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> and when that happens, we'll have you back. Yeah, exactly. I'm right. coming back. <laughs> Ricky Cleveland, thank you.